in today's video, language learning's hidden levels. What are some of the things that um, you will acquire or experience over time as you go deeper and deeper into your target language? What are some of the things that people enjoy experiencing or talking about that can be a little bit hard to ferret out and put into words? That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to, I have maybe five or six points here, and we're going to go deeper and deeper into the language learning journey. What are some of the things that happen besides just learning the language better and, and um, commanding the language better? Uh, in a moment here, you're going to see just what I mean. The first point is you're going to start to learn words and phrases that just don't translate into your native language. You're going to learn new actionable concepts that are going to change your way of life, concepts that don't exist in your native language and your native culture. So this is the first hidden level, maybe something that you didn't expect. You're going to encounter words like, there's a good one in Japanese that I like, wabi-sabi, which I never forgot since the moment I heard it. I'm not studying Japanese, by the way, but this is just an example. Wabi-sabi in Japanese means uh, that there is beauty in imperfection. Um, so imagine a cracked vase or picture frame that's not hanging perfectly straight on the wall. These things contain a certain kind of beauty. Um, so I won't give a lot more examples here. There's a lot of fantastic articles on the internet that collect these. You can look for words that words in foreign language that don't have an equivalent in X language or you can look for a list of untranslatable words and concepts, things like this, and you'll find some great articles that will expand your mind. Okay, the second hidden level of language learning. You're going to start to be able to use that target language with friends of yours who are learning it too. It's going to become like a code language for you guys and girls that other people around you don't know uh, they won't know what you're saying. So that's a fun level to get to when you realize, hmm, I have enough proficiency to actually use this language with my other friends. So me and my friends, we are not native speakers of this language. Other people around us don't know this language, or we assume, we hope, don't know, and we can use this language like a code. I had a lot of fun with that <clears throat> back in the day when I was learning Mandarin with one of my good friends at university. Be careful with this one, by the way, because other people might know that language. <laughs> language learning's hidden levels. Number three, you're going to start to have dreams where you and other people around you are using this target language. Well, you might not actually, but it's quite possible. And sometimes people wonder, when is this going to happen to me? I want it to happen to me. I want to experience this. I'm not a person who dreams a lot, or I don't have dreams that I can remember when I wake up. Um, but I did have the experience, very vivid experience, of having dreams in Mandarin a few weeks after I had come to China for the first time. So I moved to China, and my brain was on fire. I've told this story often. My brain felt like it was rewiring. Every day was super exciting. Everything was new to me. Everything was novel and everybody around me was speaking Mandarin. So I used to have a little bit of trouble going to sleep. I used to toss and turn at nights. So this went on for the first few weeks where, you know, my mind, again, it was like kind of on fire and rewiring. And after a few weeks of that, I was having a lot of dreams and in the dreams there was Mandarin. So kind of a cool thing. Maybe there is a scientific reason for that or why that happens, but I hope you get to experience too. It's going to give you some confidence. It's going to make you feel like, hmm, this language is really becoming a part of me. I mean, if it's happening, if it's going on unconsciously in my dream world, I mean, it must be going pretty deep, right? Okay, number four. You're going to start to prefer to use this target language for some certain words and phrases or in certain contexts. And um, a simple example I can give you uh, from my life is once I had moved to China and I was learning Mandarin more and more, I realized that, hmm, 
there are certain words that Chinese people use much more than I ever did as an English speaker in America. And these are simple words, but it'll give you an idea of what I mean. I couldn't think of anything better at the moment, though I'm sure there's better examples out there. But in my opinion, Chinese people tend to use the words should be and seems so much, much more. In Chinese, these words are yin gai shi or hao xiang shi. And so Chinese people are known for being pretty indirect and they kind of want to hedge their bet when they're giving answers on certain things. They want to leave a little room for uncertainty and not make it seem like their idea or their opinion is so infallible. Um, sometimes they'll um, use these words to smooth over things over in the conversation. And I've found that they happen so much in Chinese that it affects my way of thinking and it affects words that I want to say in English. I found myself wanting to say it seems, yada, 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 or should be, should be like this in English. Okay, number five. This is where things get a little more philosophical, a little bit more profound. Um, perhaps you've heard sayings like, to have a second language is to have a second soul. Or maybe you've heard that people say in a different language, when they're operating in a different language, they feel like they are, they are accessing or developing a different personality from their original personality that they've built up across their lifetime. Or maybe you've heard that when you learn this other language or when you live in a different culture, different country, you're going to learn to adopt a different worldview. So it's almost like you have different glasses that you can put on to see events that are happening in the world or when you're living your daily life. So I want to kind of bundle all these things together in this esoteric category. The last hidden level, level number five, is that you're going to start to feel like you have another personality or another soul inside you. You're going to feel like you have a different pair of eyes. And sometimes you can consciously choose to move into that personality or to see things in a certain way. Sometimes it's going to happen without your conscious involvement because the language and the culture is going to become such a part of you that you have no choice but to see, see things in a certain way or react to things in a certain way or say or explain things in a certain way in that target language. So this is why people, I think, believe, rightly so, that to learn a foreign language is so useful and important or to travel is so useful and important because it's only when it's only through contrast that we can truly know ourselves if you've never learned another language or you've never traveled how do you really know how your own personality culture language country stacks up how do you know how it relates to the whole when you learn other languages and travel you're going to be able to see your original language and culture in relief. It, you're going to be able to compare and contrast it and to know it better. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed these five hidden levels of language learning. Those things that are a little bit hard to put a fine point on, but they do exist and you will experience them the longer you stay on this language learning path. I wish you all the best and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye bye for now.